Hi, some old guy coding again. And we're going to play with JTEC Photonics Laser Etch Program. On Amazon, I picked up some little one and a half inch uh, wooden rounds, and I'll post a picture up here. And I was thinking that it be, might be kind of nice to hand these out as a, you know, here's my web, here's my YouTube channel. Um, go out and watch some videos, you know, instead of the, you know, regular card. Um, I thought it might be neat to have some laser engraved little wooden rounds to hands out, hand out. So I was working on those. I've got, uh, this is going to be the back side. Uh, I've got uh, my logo and I uh, dithered it in a, a software on the Mac here to uh, be a, whoops, to be a dot, uh, uh, sort of like in, in the newspaper where there's dots of different sizes that makes the uh, colors or the gradients. Um, I could have used... <coughs> Inkscape, but honestly, I'm just not proficient enough in Inkscape to uh, to accomplish this. So I've just got some, uh, you know, just about any image editing, any editing app uh, will be able to do what we need to do today. So it's no big deal. So I created that. And there's the front side with the uh, QR code on it that I generated off the internet. Uh, there's lots of free spots to do that. So let's take a look at this process once. I happen to be using a uh, graphic to do this. And I edited it in here, created it in here, imported the uh, QRC code, and uh, made a, uh, a page that was one and a half by one and a half inches uh, because that's the size the round of the uh, size of the rounds that I have. And then I, I went to export it. And initially, I just used the default DPI, and I think on Mac, it might be 72 DPI, I, I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, I, I put one out here so we could look at, and if you bring that up, it's awful darn small. And if you zoom in, it's, it's pretty ugly, so I, I don't want to engrave that. So uh, on export here of this, I'll go up here and say export, and any graphic software can do this for you. Um, <clears throat> I went and just arbitrarily said 400, you know, 300 would have been fine, you know, but uh, I just typed in a number and saved it. So uh, there we are. So I exported them at 400 DPI, but and converted them to BMP, Windows BMP formats. And let's see if I can get back to parallel here. So the problem is then there's this uh, pixel travel here that uh, of course at 400 dpi uh, without changing the settings in JTEC Photonics uh, laser etch it's going to think that it's a huge file so I think this was previously set at like 0.1 uh, millimeters um, per, per uh, pixel uh, but obviously being I'm at 400 dpi I've got to go smaller <coughs> And of course, I saved it in DPI to, uh, and this thing would kind of like to have it in DP millimeters. So I'll put converter on the end there. There we go. There, convert DPI to uh, DPMM. <coughs> so we're going to go from 400 dots per inch. Whoops. 400 dots per inch. And then we want to go to dot per millimeter. Yeah, it just automatically converts. So there we are. So there is our value of dots per millimeter, and I'm just going to copy that. But the JTEC program, so I can get back to there. The JTEC program wants a dot per pixel, or the, the uh, travel per pixel, rather. And we need to figure that out. So we're just going to take uh, the dots per millimeter and divide uh, it into one. So one divided by, we'll paste in that other value, equals. So that's going to be 0 0.0635 millimeters per pixel. So that's what I put in here, 0 0.0635. That was a nice number. It didn't uh, run on forever. And that's what I used to generate the G code files. Now with that in there, you can say done, and then we can go ahead and uh, save the save the G code file, which I've already done, and saved it as a, a 
so I know it's 400 uh, DPI essentially. So we'll cancel out of that. Yep, cancel. Okay, perfect. So now I have my two files, <coughs> and those files are going to be the uh, the backside G code, and then I also have the uh, front side G code. So anyway, I'm going to move these two to um, the flash drive, and we'll go downstairs and see what happens. All right. So first, let me bring you up to date with some of the stuff that I've been doing on here. Uh, for instance, I move this stuff aside. You can probably see it anyway. There is a laser uh, etched uh, grid pattern uh, on the waste board here, and uh, I did that using Fusion 360 and uh, um, one of the um, MPC and C uh, group uh, created um, what they call them uh, post processors. I mean. The MPC and C group uh, and, and, uh, on vicious1.com is very active. And uh, heck, they're even writing software, so it's fantastic. So now we have two options on Fusion to use um, as a uh, post processor uh, to create G code files off of Fusion. Um, and I'm planning on showing you how I did this, but I'm just not proficient enough on Fusion yet uh, that I can accomplish it without having to edit out a bunch of foul language. So we're, we're, I keep pushing that one off and practicing on Fusion and, and studying and I'll get there. But in the meantime, let's go back to the subject. Uh, or actually, let me show you a couple other updates. Um, I printed some of these guys out. Uh, they're available on, uh, on the uh, uh, Thingiverse. They're, they're really nice. I printed them with three uh, uh, borders and uh, pretty good infill and uh, they're really tough and they're going to work great. Um, however, I didn't like the knobs that came with those. I, I like the, the nice rounded soft knobs, a little bit easier on my hands and uh, I will put up a link to this one too. Um, different project. They fit the quarter 20 bolts and they've got a nice insert for the head here so we're just slide that guy in and it looks like it's just not going to fit but, you know, then you give it a good push and it does, and it holds in there really tight, and it looks great, and then we'll be able to uh, bolt that down wherever I want by placing uh, these guys. Let me pull one out here. It's the uh, Easy Lock, uh, uh, something or other designed for quarter 20. They want you to drill a 9 millimeter hole, and of course, uh, I just don't have a 9 millimeter bit. <clears throat> Uh, but uh, I do have a pretty good selection, so I just go through with a caliper and find the one that's just a little bit smaller than 9mm, and that's what I drill the hole with, and that's what I did over here, as I uh, drilled the hole, um, and then I used an Allen wrench that fits nicely into, uh, into this end here. This is the right one, I think. Yep, it is, and then you uh, uh, screw it into the uh, uh, waste board like that until it's a little bit below the surface and then, and then the quarter 20 uh, uh, you know, threaded uh, bolt will screw right in there. So no, that's just one option. You know, there's a lot of options for how to do your hold downs on your, your bed. You can uh, you know, drill holes periodically and do that too. But uh, So here's a little widget I made and I'm not really happy with it. I'm, I'm thinking about doing you know, something different on the lines of uh, um, something square you know, that would mount in here like this on the, on the holes I've drilled, but it, it, it holds down and I've got uh, a little stubby version I can get it out, a little stubby version of that knob that I really like um, created so it'll hold this guy down Let's see if I can get it in there I could have gone with a little bit shorter uh, bolt there too and it's hard to see on here, but on this little widget, I've got little little fins that come out to help you align it with uh, the outside markings on the uh, on the board here. So my plan was that you know I want to be able to recreate these. Um, you can just take it and flip it over and do the back side, you know, or slap another one in there, and, and this holds everything nice and snug. And I'm going to move the camera one more time here. And while it would, would have been perfectly fine just to push uh, the axis all the way over as far as they go to the starting point, um, I wanted to use my 
X and Y home switches. Now, I, I know there's controversy on which way you want to go with this, but this is kind of an in-between project, and I kind of like the idea of using the home switches so I could set the program up to, uh, to home at the beginning, and uh, I'd always know it was in the right position. Now, you can always do it some other way. But in the process of doing that, I came across a problem. Now, whenever uh, at the start of my code to run this uh, program in uh, Laser Etch, I put a, a G28XY, it's a home X and Y axis. But there's this other thing that happens when you initially power up and, and hit any home, it wants to raise the X axis to clear anything that's in there you know, clear any obstacles before it starts homing uh, the X or Y. And of course I've got my laser focused, I don't want it moving that X axis, or the Z axis rather. Um, so I made a modification in the code. So this is Release Candidate 8 from the uh, mostly printed CNC website, vicious1.com. And the change that I made is the Z clearance between probes. Uh, I set that to zero to keep the X axis from raising up. So that's not too bad. I think there's some room for improvement. So I went through several iterations and adjusted the uh, the images a little bit here and also tweaked the speed uh, and power which I was using. In this shot here you can see uh, uh, five different ones uh, as time goes on. The first one was the original of course. The second one I tried to speed things up and actually those little extra lines and uh, artifacts became worse as I sped up. I guess that kind of makes sense. Uh, the third one I s slowed down and things looked better. The fourth one I slowed down some more and also dropped the power some more. Uh, a little bit too low, uh, I think, um, but uh, the image certainly looked better. And the last one, I just bumped the power up. I wanted a little bit darker image. So as you can see here on the settings, I've uh, decreased the uh, speed for the laser on to 500 and also decreased the power to uh, 55. So. so here's the final result. I think it came out pretty good. Hopefully as I hand these out to people that uh, it'll trigger some interest and some discussion and uh, people will come and take a look at my YouTube channel. Alright, thanks for watching.